What's going on you guys? I'm John Turner. This is Woods to Table and I'm excited. This is a landmark weekend in my life. My 30s are coming to an end. All good things must, right? I'm turning 40 over the hill and I'm looking forward to the future. And the future is here. Fishing season's coming in, turkey season's starting to wane. We got some more weekends in the woods, but we're ready to get out here after these fish. And I'm gonna upgrade this boat. We're gonna upgrade this low rance hook five significantly. We're gonna go with this Garmin Echo Map UHD 93 SV ton more detail in here. I'm going to show you how we install it. It's quick and easy. Nothing to be intimidated by and I'm going to give you my honest review. My first few weekends using this thing on the water. Y'all stick with me. Alright so back at home off the water and ready to actually do the install. I've been thinking long and hard about this ever since kind of testing the um, the power and the transducer through the hull out on the water and I, I don't love it. I mean working just having the transducer laying in place is one thing but the more I've been thinking about it the only way that I can access that install location is through this tiny little hole up here right in front of the motor. I have to reach my whole arm in there up to the shoulder uh, in order to get down there and uh, I can't see what I'm doing. And so I'm worried about getting the thing installed at the proper angle and getting the epoxy spread in there evenly, not getting air bubbles in it and all that stuff. So I'm worried about being able to do a good quality install. So I think um, I've been sweating over this. I'm, I think I'm going to go with a transom mount uh, for this transducer. And I've been kind of worried about that too, because I want to make sure that I do this without um, putting another hole in my boat, if I can avoid that, and where to kind of run this wire. Because if you look, you know, all of the, um, all the wires, electrical wires and everything um, run into the hole right here. And um, I've got, you know, fuel lines and everything coming out right here. There's not a place with this little gasket, if you can even see this little black gasket, there's not a place for me to kind of sneak another wire, particularly something that's got a big end on it, like the end of this um, transducer cable, which is about five eighths of an inch around in through here. So it looks like it's going to require another hole somewhere. Um, I'm a little bit fortunate in that there's this little vent hole right here um, with a little cap on it. And there's another one on the other side. If I can pop this out, and I've got a hole that looks like it's about three quarters of an inch around. And I think I can just um, drill a hole through the middle of this little um, grommet or this little cap and run the wire in there. It's not gonna cut down on the ventilation. It might actually help the amount of ventilation um, that I have coming out of the transom of the boat. So I think I can run the wire through there and then it's just a matter of kind of securing the excess wire here on the outside where it looks like a neat quality installation. So I think that's the route I'm gonna go. Otherwise, I can always change it up later on if we want to do something different. All right, we got to start this install somewhere. So the transducer is as good a place as any. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run the transducer cable through this uh, ventilation grommet hole and snake that thing up to the console, and then we'll do the power. In order to do that, I need to bore out that uh, ventilation grommet, and I need about a 5 8 inch uh, drill bit. I don't have one. The biggest that I have is half inch. So I think I can still do this and then kind of waddle the hole out a little bit. We'll see. Got it. All right, so just gonna run this wire up into here. We're gonna run this into this hole, into the transom, and we'll pick it up right in there, and then fit this grommet right over this hole. It makes it a little bit more finished, and then I can probably do something to kind of close in the rest of that hole and kind of clean up this rough edge on this thing a little bit. We'll come back to this bit. So, we got a whole bunch of transducer wire that we need not back there, we need it up here. Best way that I know to do this is just take you a couple of wire coat hangers and unfold those things, tape them together, and this is really malleable. Um, you can bend it to about any shape and just run this down the inside of this um, gun rail and then into your transom. And uh, we'll tape this onto our transducer line and pull it all the way back through. That quickly, there is our coat hanger. Now we'll just pick up our transducer wire from right here, tape these two together, pull it all the way back through, transducer wire, right there. So now we're good. You can take this tape loose. Ideally, so you want to make sure, one, your transducer cable doesn't get nicked, it doesn't get crimped in any way, but you really kind of want to install this away from electrical wires to prevent interference. It's just an inevitability with an aftermarket install like this. I mean, they had 
the Hook 5 transducer wire just bundled up with all the electrical stuff coming back here to the battery. So I don't think we're going to be able to avoid it. I just want to make sure this is neat and clean and gives me access to the oil reservoir and the battery whenever I need it. So I want those wires out of the way. I'll deal with the cleanup later. And I'm going to run this, run it up to this hole in the dash right here. Okay, there we go. See? Now I'm going to go ahead and connect the power. Then I'll have both cables just laying here. We'll be ready to cut out the dash. That terrifies me. We're doing what? Before I go in here and screw this thing in, the only two wires that I'm really concerned about are the positive and the negative. Positive with the three amp fuse. Um, these two other wires, the brown and the blue, um, are for connecting some additional accessories, which I don't have. So you can just ignore these. I'm probably going to cap these just so I don't have bare wires floating around down there um, in case there's any moisture or anything like that underneath the dash. Here I go. Come on down here. I'll show you what I'm dealing with. Hey, yeah. All right, so this is my view of the fuse panel that's down here. Um, the I don't know what this audio is going to sound like because it sounds like I'm in a tomb. The uh, power for the Hook 5 came out of this 5 amp, and then the ground was right here. So I'm just going to go back in the same spot um, with this 5 amp fuse, and I'm probably going to swap this out to a 3 um, just to match what's uh, the inline fuse that's going into the unit itself. If I can't do that, then um, the inline fuse is the appropriate 3 amps. And so I know I'm going to get the performance and the protection that I need. So we're just going to loosen these screws and attach our positive here and our ground here. And I don't have any of these kind of U-shaped clips. I'll come back and do that um, at another time. But this will at least get me on the water if I screw the bare wires in right here. Let's take a break. <laughs> break time. I'm going to go ahead and install this ferrite shield. And it says that you want to do this as close to the... Uh, as close to the connection as you can. So I'm just going to come through here. Let's see. I've got plenty of excess to make this work. So we're just going to lay this thing on top of itself. I do not want to crimp this cable. I haven't installed one of these before. I don't want to crimp the cable at all. But it's just going to lay just like this. All right. Uh, I'm really trying to put off this part cutting into the dash as long as I possibly can. So why don't we go back and install that transom mount transducer? Yeah, that makes me nervous. Say that five times fast. Transom mount transducer. Transom mount transducer. Transom mount transducer. That's what's that three? Transom mount transducer. <laughs> transducer. Transom mount transducer. Transducer. Transom mount transducer. Transom mount. Transom mount transducer. I don't know why it takes us so long to do projects. The next step is to assemble this plastic L-bracket that holds the transducer on the transom. For some reason, this thing doesn't come assembled. And anytime you ever see me consulting instructions, you know something's just not quite adding up. This is beyond annoying. I mean, why not just send this thing assembled? I'm just kidding. Follow the instructions. It's not that bad. Now, I'd say the tension here is actually important because you want it to be tight enough that obviously it's not going to move around when the boat's moving at a high speed, but if you smack something in the water, you want it to be able to pivot out of the way. Now we're going to cut out the mounting template. All right, so the spacing here is important. You want this to be mounted on the starboard side of the boat um, if you've got a prop that spins uh, clockwise, and you're going to want to make sure that it's more than 15 inches away from the prop and you're not mounting it near any strakes or anything like that that are going to introduce noise, chop, or bubbles that are going to interfere with your signal. For me, this means I'm going to come right here and attach my mounting template and this is where we're going to bore our holes. So you're going to want this bottom corner of this mounting template to be um, flush with the bottom of the boat and you're going to want the top of this to be level. So I'm just going to double check this with an old level that I've got. And that's pretty darn close. To do this, I'm just going to take a really fine drill bit and kind of mark the fiberglass where I want the hole to be. All right, the instructions don't tell you to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and pilot bore a very small hole using a really fine drill bit just to guide the rest of the bits when I go to, um, to I don't know, drill the actual hole. Um, and the actual hole that I want is 5 30 seconds of an inch. It's a little bit too much of a drill bit. I'm concerned about cracking the gel coat, so I'm going to take a few measures in order to make sure that I don't do that. Make absolutely sure as you do this that you're not drilling too deep. Take it slow. Okay. 
You see I stopped as soon as I punched through the fiberglass. Now I'm going to attach some painter's tape over top of these holes. Tap the holes with this little tiny drill bit just so I know where I'm going. Now I'm going to countersink these just barely into the fiberglass so that um, I reduce the risk of cracking the gel coat. Last step, five thirty seconds hole just before we install. Perfect. I'm happy with that. All right, so this is below the water line, so we're going to make sure we seal the threads on the screws and the hole itself with some silicone. As annoying as it is, it's actually important to do this by hand because as thin as that fiberglass is, you do not want to strip these holes. Might want to go a little bit tighter with that now that we have it down here and I can see how much it's actually flexing. We'll go a little bit tighter on that bolt. All right, so the last step back here on the transom is I need to attach some of these little keeper clips um, at a couple of different points. I don't know if you can see this. At a couple of different points on the fiberglass up here just to make this um, nice and neat, but I like to do all that finishing work at the end of a project just in case I mean you never know when you're gonna have to come back and make an adjustment So we'll do that here at the end now comes the part of the install. I've actually been dreading Avoiding there's a reason that I started back here on the transom um, Now I've got to cut into the dash for the flush mount and it's just a necessary evil I just don't like putting holes in my boat first step here take your mounting template make sure it's centered make sure it's level That looks pretty stinking level to me Tape that thing in place with some painters tape. You do not want it to move all right, so part of the reason I've been so nervous about cutting this hole in the dash is because I literally only get one chance at this. I mean, you can only, I mean, if, I, if it's off center, if it's off level, anything like that, I can't redo it. And so I'm just being very careful, putting a level on this thing, making sure that it's, it's square, it's even. Um, and part of this is made more difficult because, I mean, it has to be an exact fit, yes, but the, I'm gonna turn you around. The dash itself, it's tight quarters. So right here, this is rounded. It kind of swoops in like this. Right here next to this gauge, it's rounded. It swoops in like that. Rounded at the bottom right here where it comes into the steering wheel. And at the top, it starts to kind of slope away from me a little bit. And so I can't get in here with a jig. Look, it's drawn on the diagram. Get in here with a jigsaw. Get in here. I can't do that because there's no space in here and it's, it's not flat uh, anywhere. And I don't have a roto zip. Um, or a Dremel tool or anything to get in here and do this. And so the next best thing that I can figure, I'll turn you around here like this. The next best thing that I can figure, I wanna go slow, I wanna be careful. And so I'm gonna use a hacksaw and get in here and just go as slow as I can with the finest tooth bit that I could find and just try my best to keep this thing on the line and see if I can do this without chipping up the fiberglass. Now this drill bit measures 1 8 of an inch. And the form has a target on there where I want to put this thing. And be so, so careful going through. One last check. Okay. It looks good. Now for the fun part. All right, 
Was that harder than a jigsaw? Yeah, absolutely. But I actually feel pretty good about my ability to stay on the line doing it this way. Look at that, just tracking right across there. So I think this was a good decision. If I can give you one piece of advice, go slow and let the saw do the work. Whew, got a little hairy, but it worked. It worked out okay. Saw blade number two. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how we did. Okay. Yeah. Will it fit? That's the best question. gonna look so stinking good oh my goodness I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up Afton's gonna be pumped oh what was that all right so I'm as pleased as I can be with how that thing went in the dash on the first try so now I'm just gonna go ahead and um, hook up the wires to the back of it slide this thing in place screw it in and we're good to go This little piece kind of goes, this little screw on collar. I gotta move the camera because that one's not here to help. This little screw on collar goes on the outside of the um, transit. The boats are shaking around on the trailer. It goes on the outside of this transducer connection, connection and that's what screws into the back of the, uh, of the unit before you put it in the dash. So don't lose this. Just finished installing this thing. Now, before I get onto the finishing work and then get onto the fun part of this review, actually using this thing, um, let me just power this thing on and make sure that it's gonna work. Don't forget to install those little finishing caps which cover up the screw heads where you mounted it to the dash. All right, now I'm near done. It really hadn't been that bad. Um, the last thing is just to come in here and button up this wiring. See if you can see this. Just button this wiring up tight where it still has enough room and enough play if I was to hit something where this thing can flip up. Uh, but I do want it to be as high and tight other than that as I can get it. So I'm gonna tack this thing on. Same kind of rules apply, right? We're gonna kind of pallet bore the holes, painter's tape to keep the gel coat from cracking. Um, countersink the outer layer of the gel coat just to keep this thing from spider webbing out and uh, we'll just take it slow take our time and um, then we're ready to get on the water That's about it for us, you guys. This thing is installed and ready to go, and we can't wait to get it out on the water. And if you want to see the honest review using this Garmin unit, our first couple of weekends out on the lake, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. It sure does help us out. We'll see you guys next time, and God bless. For now, we're out.